The Suragama Mantra, Volume 6, Chapter 3. Sutra, Ananda, I will now tell you more about how this mantra can rescue and protect the wound, help people obtain great fearlessness, and bring to accomplishment living with transcendental wisdom. Commentary, Ananda, I will now tell you more about how this mantra, the Suragama Mantra, can rescue and protect the wound. Help people obtain great fearlessness and bring to accomplishment living beings transcendental wisdom. It can fulfill any wishes living beings might have, but most importantly, it can reveal their transcendental wisdom. Sutra, you should know that after my extinction, if there are beings in the Dharma ending age who can recite the mantra themselves or teach others to recite it, such people who recite and uphold it cannot be burned by fire, cannot be drowned by water, and cannot be harmed by mind or potent poisons. Commentary You should know that after my extinction, if there are beings in the Dharma ending age, this includes you and me who can recite the mantra themselves or teach others to recite it. Such people who recite and uphold it cannot be burned by fire. Perhaps one can recite the mantra from memory or teach others to recite it from memory. People who can recite the mantra from memory or can read it will not be burned by fire or they cannot be drowned by water. Nor they can be harmed by mild and potent poisons. Sutra. And so it is in every other case such that they cannot be possessed by any evil mantra or any heavenly dragon, ghost, or spirit, or by any essence, weird creature, or demonic ghost. These people's minds will attain proper reception, so that any spell, any paralyzing, sorcery, any poison or poisoning gold, any poisoning silver, any plant, tree, insect, or snake, and any of a myriad kinds of poisonous vapors will turn into sweet dew when it enters their mouths. Commentary And so it is in every other case such that they cannot be possessed by any evil mantra or any heavenly dragon, ghost or spirit or by any essence, weird creature or demonic ghost. All these kinds of ghosts and demons use evil spells. The five phrases of the mantra I told you about recently. Shurtuani Urchala Mili Chu Boli Tanlaye Ning Chali represent the five divisions, the five divisions and the five Buddhas. They are known as the five great heart mantras. You should not regard them as ordinary. Together they comprise the heart mantra of the Buddhas of the five divisions. The function of this heart mantra is to destroy the mantras and spells of demons. It doesn't matter what kind of evil spell they are weaving. You can smash through it with this mantra. Their mantras lose all their effectiveness. They are rendered useless. These evil mantras cannot possess you because the five great heart mantras destroy them. These people's minds will attain proper reception. If you recite the Suragama Mantra, you can obtain proper concentration so that any spell, any devil's mantra of the heavenly demons or of adherents of externalist ways can harm you. Any para paralyzing sorcery. There is a lot of sorcery in southern China, also in Southeast Asia, such as Burma, Korea, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and such places. The kind of sorcery they use, called Hu, is also based on mantras and spells. If you eat something poisoned by them, you are forever under their spell. You must do as they command. If you don't, you die. In Australia, in the mountain regions, there is a religious sect that uses mantras to string people's heads to the size of chicken eggs, and then they put them on display as a sorcerer's charms. In a world as large as this, there's every kind of weird thing imaginable. You shouldn't have the attitude that if you haven't seen it, you don't believe it exists. If you don't believe it, 
to uh, just plain stupid. Why do I say that? There are lots there are lots of things you've never seen, and if you go on with the idea that you must see them before you believe them, you've never finished in your entire life. Before America was discovered, before anyone knew it existed, if you had approached someone and tried to convince him that there was in fact another continent with mountains and all the rest, he very likely would not have believed you. But though he may have denied the existence of America, would that have meant that America did not in fact exist? Was it there before it was discovered? Whether or not he admitted its existence, it still existed. But this, by the same token, whether or not you believe that the strange things being discussed here exist, they exist nonetheless. So if you deny the existence of a thing just because you haven't seen it yourself, you basically don't have a grasp of the way the world really is. If someone sinks some hole in you, if they apply their sorcery to you, you are forever their slave. If you oppose them, you die. In addition to who poison, if any poison or poisoning gold, any poisoning silver, any plant, tree, insect, or snake, or any of a myriad kinds of poisonous vapors enter the mouth of people who recite the Suragama mantra, it will turn into sweet dew. Suppose I test this, you suggest. Suppose I experiment. You still haven't perfected your recitation of the Suragama Mantra. When you've got it down to the point that is efficacious and magical, then you can experiment. Before you reach that stage, don't play around with it. Sutra. No evil stars, no ghost or spirit. That harbors malice in his heart and that poisons people can work its evil on these people. Vinayakai, as well as all the evil ghost kings and their retinues, will be led by deep kindness to always guard and protect them. Commentary The previous section of text said that any kind of poisonous thing that enters the mouth of a person who recites and opposes the Suragama mantra will turn into sweet dew. These things are basically poisonous, but their composition changes. And the change comes about because one recites and opposes the Suragama mantra. No evil star refers to evil constellations and such things as Tai Sui and the white tiger star, which is terrible. And there is the star Sang Men, which is extremely inauspicious and can kill people. But none of these kinds of stars can harm one, nor can any ghost or spirit that harbors malice in his heart and poisons people. Some people say they don't believe in ghosts and or spirits. They have never seen a ghost, and so they don't believe there are any. If they saw one, they'd have no way not to believe in it, even if they didn't want to. Malice is also a kind of poison. A kind of poison like arsenic, that drug is fatal if more than a little is taken. But someone will even that much poison in his heart still cannot harm a person who recites and opposes the Suragama Mantra. He cannot work his evil on these people. Rather, the poison in their own hearts is transformed. Vinayaka was mentioned in the description of setting up the Bodhi Manda. He is a protector with the various transformations, which often show a ball of a ball or an elephant head with a chunk on a human body. In general, he is extremely ugly. He, as well as the evil ghost kings and their retinues, will be led by deep kindness and always guard and protect them. Having been influenced by the profound compassion of the Buddha in the past, these ghost kings and Dharma's protectors have resolved to always guard and protect those who recite and uphold the Suragama Mantra. The advantages of reciting the Suragama Mantra are truly inconceivable. Sutra Ananda, you should know that 84,000 Nayutas of Ganges sands of Gotis of Varachajari King Bodhisattvas and their descendants 
age with very multitudes of as retinue are ever in attendance day and night upon this mantra. Commentary Naruta is one of the 14 large numbers in Sanskrit. Some say it represents 1 trillion, others say 10 trillion. In general, it's a big number. Genji sense of Kotis is said to be equivalent to a trillion. Not only are the Vada Treasury King Bodhisattvas in attendance on the mantra, those of their lineage are also present, and each member of the, the entire lineage is accompanied by a retinue of Vada beings. Day and night, they are always present wherever the Surakama mantra is being upheld. These Bodhisattvas are the ones praised in the section above. Namo Buddhas of the Ten Directions, Namo Dharma of the Ten Directions, Namo Sangha of the Ten Directions, Namo Shakyamuni Buddha, Namo Foremost Suragama atop the Buddha Summit, Namo Kwanshin Bodhisattva, Namo Vada Treasury Bodhisattvas. The 84,000 are referred to in the last line, but actually it's not only the Vada Treasury Bodhisattvas who are so numerous, the retinues of all bodhisattvas that are that numerous. Sutra, if living beings whose minds are scattered and who have no samadhi remember and recite the mantra, the Vara kings will always surround them. Therefore, good man is even that is even more true for those who are decisively reserved upon Bodhi. All the Vara Chajari King Bodhisattvas will regard them attentively and secretly hasten the opening of their spiritual consciousness. Commentary If living beings whose minds are scattered, their thoughts go every which way and are not the least bit concentrated. They also have no somebody power, but they remember and recite a mantra. They remember the Suragama mantra spoken by the Buddha. The Vara kings, the Bodhisattvas, will always surround them, that is, those with scattered minds. If they uphold the Suragama mantra, therefore, good men, that is even more true for those who are decisively reserved upon Bodhi. Your people who have firmly brought forth the Bodhi mind will also be protected by these Vara treasury king Bodhisattvas who will regard you attentively and secretly hasten the opening of your spiritual consciousness. With close regard for you, they will help you in hidden ways. What will they do? They will help you increase your wisdom, your spiritual consciousness. Little by little, they will help those who have scattered minds to become concentrated. Gradually, they will obtain samadhi power. Invisibly, they will help those who hold the mantra to open their wisdom and become single-minded. Sutra, when that response occurs, those people will be able to remember the events of as many compass as their grains of sand in 84,000 Ganges rivers, knowing them all beyond any doubt. Commentary, when the Vada Treasury King Bodhisattvas invisibly open their spiritual awareness when that response occurs, those people will be able to remember the events of as many compass as their grains of sand in 84,000 Ganges rivers, knowing them all beyond any doubt. They know very clearly about everything that took place throughout such a long period of time. They have wisdom that has gone beyond doubt. This means they obtain the penetration of past lives. They know the things that happened in the past. Sutra from that kampa onward, through every life until the time they take their last body, they will not be born where there are yakshas, rakshasas, putanas, kataputanas, kumbandas, pishachas, and so forth. Where there is any kind of hungry ghost, whether with form or lacking form, or without or lacking thought, or in any such evil place. Commentary from that kampa onward, through every life until the time they take their last body, that is, when they become a Buddha, they will not be born where there are yakshas. They will be born and die again and again, but they will not be born in bad paths, such as that of the yakshas, 
speaking ghosts, nor will they get born where there are rakshasas, terrifying ghosts that eat people. When a person dies, this kind of ghost uses a mantra to change the flesh of the decaying corpse back into fresh meat and eats it. Nor will they have to be around putanas, bad smelling ghosts, which are both evil and foul smelling. If you encounter such a ghost, you will contract a fever. Putanas are also known as butanas, nor will such people be born where there are kataputanas, strange smelling ghosts. The other one smelled bad, but this one smells weird, an odor you've never smelled before, one that is incredibly strong, as was referred to by the phrase, it smelled to strange one could not bear to breathe. If you get a whiff of this odor, it will make you vomit on the spot. It connects with the bad smelling stuff inside you so that you have to regurgitate. You spit your insides out that it's that strong. This ghost causes fevers to an even greater degree of intensity. Your entire body burns with fevers up to 120 degrees and more. It simply burns your bones to ashes. Violent, wouldn't you say? They won't be born where there are kumbandas. Actually, all these ghosts have been mentioned before. The kumbandas are barrel-shaped ghosts. These ghosts paralyze people. They come on you in your sleep and paralyze you. You open your eyes to find that you can't move, nor can you speak. That is a fire cyst. It can kill people with the paralysis. If a person has young energy, then the paralysis won't hold. It only is effective on those who have excessive yin energy. What is meant by young? It means always being happy, truly happy in our self-nature. That is not just laughing it up on the surface of things. Ha ha ha. It refers to the extreme beliefs experienced in your inherent nature. If in your self-nature you are always worried and depressed, being afflicted, upset and distressed all day long, that belongs to yin. Those belonging to yin are... Um, the ones that ghosts can possess. Yang belongs to the spirit. Predominance of yang is a spirit. Predominance of yin is a ghost. People who cultivate the Buddha path and have pure yang energy also have light. But if one is totally yin, there is a black energy present. So it can be told if a person is good or not just by is good or not just by looking at him or her. Good people have white energy around them. Bad people have a mass of black energy, demonic energy. They also will not be born where there are pishachas and so forth. Pishachas are essence and energy eating ghosts. These ghosts sap the energy from things as well as from people. This kind of ghost is terrible and not at all good. For the most part, ghosts are bad, but among the path of ghosts are also bodhisattvas who compassionately and deliberately manifest as ghost kings in order to take ghosts across. Nor will they be born where there is any kind of hungry ghost. There are many types of hungry ghosts. Some have huge stomachs, some have thrusts as skinny as needles. Whether with form or lacking form, some have bodies and some are invisible. They have no physical form. But just because you can't see something, don't assume it isn't there. Invisible creatures may lack form, but they have consciousness. You cannot see them with the ordinary eyes, but you, if you have the five eyes and six spiritual penetrations, it is easy to see them. With thought or lacking thought, some have the um, capability of thought, while others have no thought. They are like dirt, wood, metal, and stone. But a person who upholds the Suragama Mantra will not be born in any such evil place. Life after life, they will not be born in places where there are hungry ghosts or where there are any other kinds of evil. Sutra, if these good people read, recite, copy, or write out the mantra, 
If they carry it or treasure it, if they make offerings to it, then through kampa after kampa, they will not be poor or lowly, nor will they be born in unpleasant places. Commentary If these good people read the mantra from a book or recite it from memory, if they copy it out respectfully or casually write it out, if they carry it on their person or treasure it, store it in their homes, if they make offerings to it of all kinds of incense and flowers, lamps, candles, and fruit, the Suragama mantra was spoken by a transformation body of the Buddha. So it is worthy of offerings. Then through kampa after kampa, they will not be poor or lowly, nor will they be born in unpleasant places. I've told you that if you can memorize the Suragama mantra to the point that it flows forth from your mind and heart, then you have obtained the samadhi of holding the mantra. Once you obtain that, if you can recite it like a flowing water which never ceases, then at the very, very least, you can be fabulously wealthy for seven lives. If you continue reciting it in this way for life after life, you can be wealthy for 70 or 700 or 7,000 or 7 million lives. There's nothing fixed about it. As long as you want to be a wealthy person, you can be one. But someday you may have had your fill because even billionaires have their problems. You may get disgusted, then you can become a Buddha. Once you become a Buddha, there are no more problems. At that point, in a state of unmoving suchness, you are ever bright and clear. So I'll give you a tip ahead of time. Being a billionaire is not as good as becoming a Buddha. People who uphold and venerate the mantra in these various ways will not be born in places that are worrisome and devoid of bliss. You could not go to those places even if you wanted to. Why? The Suragama mantra is pulling at you, telling you not to go. It will be impossible for you to go.